I'm anticipating this video may piss off a lot of people. I'm going to present my argument, my supporting statements. If anybody wants to argue with anything I say, take your best shot. Billions of kids are told a tale. They're told that this tale is wondrous, good, noble, divine. The tale of an all-powerful God who sacrifices his only begotten son in order to save us from our sins. This is the greatest story ever told. And the kids will continue to believe it unless they start thinking about it. If they start thinking about it really hard, the story falls apart really, really quickly. There is a reason why belief and faith for re religion is sold as being something that's virtuous because that blind faith, faith believing in things without thinking is necessary for religions to survive. But if you really start thinking about this story, and let's begin with Jesus Christ being an only begotten son of God. If we're all God's children, then God has billions of sons. So it's really not his only son. It's his only special son because Jesus can raise people from the dead, turn a little food into a lot of food, perform miracles other men can't. So it's God's only special begotten son. Does this make sense for an all-powerful being? Is an only son something that's so precious for a God that's all-powerful? Does it make sense? And the answer is no, because if God is all-powerful, he can has, have as many special sons as he wants. There's a special son. There's a special son. There's 10, 100, 1,000, a million, as many as he wants. So in what scenario does an only son being the most precious thing in the world make sense? Well, it makes sense for men thousands of years ago who believed in order for that their bloodline to move on, for their name to move on, that it had to happen through sons. And if they only had one son who died before they were able to have sons, then when they themselves died, their bloodline would cease. It would, it would end. So in that perspective, it makes sense. Also, considering the ignorance they had of human reproduction, they thought that men planted the seed. A woman provided the pot with soil but the man planted the seed, and then that's how a human came to be. Well, we now know that women produce eggs. Men produce the sperm, the sperm fertilizes the eggs. Both have DNA, and they mix this DNA, and that's why there is a male and a female. If there was a single sex that reproduced, you wouldn't have that mixing of DNA. That mixing of DNA is advantageous in survival. That's why through evolutionary process, we have male and female. So the man doesn't plant the egg. The woman creates the egg. This isn't just putting a seed into the ground and reproducing as plants do. The son and the daughter both carry on the bloodline. It's not just the son. The son doesn't carry on the bloodline any more than the daughter does. So the history of a bloodline is not men begetting men. It's men and women begetting men and women. So it makes sense for men thousands of years ago to have this belief that an only son is the most precious thing in the world. For an all-powerful God, it makes no sense because, once again, all-powerful God can have as many sons as he wants. Plus, an all-powerful God is immortal, so it will never die and have to worry about its bloodline not moving on. It doesn't have to worry about death because it will continue to live. It doesn't make sense for an all-powerful God. It doesn't make sense for men thousands of years ago. Now, why would a God have the same insecurities 
and limitations and ignorance as men thousands of years ago? Well, the answer is obvious. These aren't the words by any all-powerful, immortal gods. These are ancient men making God in their image with the same ignorance and insecurities and desires. The, the answer is obvious. That's the only perspective where it makes sense. And then the story gets even worse because eventually leadership in the church decides that Jesus and God have to be the same person. Why is this? Well, in order to be monotheist, one, you can only have one God. If you have more than one God, then you're polytheism, and they're competing with the pagans who are polytheistic. And so if they have multiple gods, the pagans will say, oh, you're just like us. You know, you're, you're the same as uh, Greek mythology. You have Zeus. Zeus's sons were gods or those born of humans, uh, demigods. Well, the Christian leadership wanted to make sure that their religion was separate. So, no, no, we're monotheism, which means Jesus and God have to be the same guy, which really doesn't make sense when you think of Jesus on a cross saying, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, if he's talking to himself, it makes absolutely no sense at all. So you have a God that grows a second head, Jesus, and sends this to earth in human form to be sacrificed for himself, uh, to himself, in order to save us from himself, uh, in order for forgiveness. But let's talk about this forgiveness. It's not really... It's very limited forgiveness. Now, it'll cover rape and torture and murder. It'll cover those things. You can be absolutely the worst human being on, on, on earth, but as long as you believe, uh, then you can get into heaven. It, so that applies. But if you're, if you're the greatest human being on earth, but you happen to be born in a different part of the world with different parents and a different religion, well, then you're to be tortured forever without mercy. So it's not forgiveness for that so-called offense. Most humans on a planet Earth are not Christian, which means this forgiveness doesn't apply to them. They're going to be burned endlessly. And it's kind of like that riddle. If a tree falls in a forest and nobody's around to hear it, did it make a noise? Well, if God sacrificed his only begotten son, but people didn't hear the story, then did he really sacrifice his son for all a human's sins? And according to the Bible, apparently not. Uh, they are doomed to be tormented forever without any chance of redemption, without any chance of mercy. So the forgiveness is a sham. It doesn't cover most of the human population. And then... Let's get to the sacrifice. So if you ask Christians who they pray for, oh, we pray to Jesus. Well, wait a minute. I thought he was sacrificed, so Jesus doesn't exist. Oh, no, he exists. So this great sacrifice is Jesus being crucified, being resurrected three days later, and then ascending into heaven where he's been for the last 2,000 years and will be for all eternity. So even the sacrifice in this story is a sham. The sacrifice is even a bigger sham than the forgiveness of our sins. So once again, all-powerful God, having an only child, makes absolutely no sense. And then this God and this only son that doesn't make any sense, being the same God, doesn't make any sense. The forgiveness is a sham, and the sacrifice is even a bigger sham than the forgiveness. And this is why this is not the greatest story ever told. This is the dumbest story ever told. This is Jim Wall. Thanks for watching. Until next time.